In this video, I am going to talk about how to make a career in financial risk analytics. Well, uh, before that, uh, let's uh, learn what is financial risk. Uh, financial risk is nothing but uh, a number of risk or set of risk uh, associated with financial transactions. Uh, banks and financial services companies uh, they they are involved in financial transaction and uh, uh, they face financial risk uh, for variety of reasons. Uh, the risk analysts or the financial risk analysts um, assess the financial risk quantified uh, or the measure uh, what exactly uh, what is the amount of financial risk involved in the transactions and suggest risk measures uh, to the management and management uh, uh, generally takes risk measure to avoid this risk. Sometimes financial risk also create opportunities. Um, so uh, in, in, in the world of finance, uh, people take extra risk in order to um, earn extra money. So that's also important for uh, the organization. And that's exactly where the financial risk analysts play uh, an important role in the bank to avoid um, catastrophic uh, damage, financial damage to the company and also to create opportunities there by leveraging uh, the, uh, you know, the risk. So what is financial analytics? Financial analytics is the part of financial risk. Uh, the word analytics is always associated with the uh, area where, um, you know, you uh, crunch data or you analyze data and, you know, get insight from your data. Um, but not necessarily all the time you will be working with data. So uh, financial analytics is it's a subset or is a part of financial risk analysis. Uh, so wherever you uh, analyze financial data, we normally call it as financial analytics. So uh, the data that normally we deal with uh, in financial analytics um, are mostly transaction data or market data. So what kind of data one uh, deals uh, in, a, in a financial analytics department. Uh, it could be the default data, how many customers are uh, defaulting on the loans, payment data, what is the payment pattern, when uh, when is somebody paying off, uh, you know there could be chances of prepayment which is not good for the company. So payment uh, data analysis is also important uh, for the company. Then financial fraud data, uh, it happens mostly in credit card industry where a number of fraudulent uh, transactions happen and that needs to be captured properly. Macroeconomic data, so data related to market, whether it's stock exchange, whether it's inflation, whether it's government policies, how is it going to impact uh, the business. So that analysis is uh, also done. So the next one is the financial asset data. So uh, the company deals with a variety of financial assets. Um, you know the simple ones and and the more complex one like derivatives. So you get to work with uh, finance different financial assets and the customer data. Uh, you get to uh, have you know get to work with uh, the customer demographic data. They have behavior data. They are uh, social media data. So that you know. Um, one can really see the risk associated with uh, the customers and how uh, that risk can be uh, minimized and uh, how it can potentially be leveraged as well. So that is what is also studied. And there are different types of financial risk. Um, the most popular one, in fact, uh, um, it is is the credit risk. Uh, so credit risk is, is nothing but uh, is also known as the counterparty credit risk where uh, you know there is always a chance that uh, the customer who, who has taken loan from the bank or the financial law, uh, institution uh, is going to default on the loan. It's not going to uh, pay back the loan that it has taken that, that the customer has taken. The next one is the interest rate risk. Uh, so it's uh, the risk associated with movement in the interest rates. Interest rate could vary or it could change with time uh, depending on different uh, macroeconomic scenario. So the risk involved with uh, that uh, is also um, is known as interest rate risk. Then there is currency risk. Uh, currency uh, or exchange rate uh, normally keeps on changing uh, every moment. So there is always a risk involved uh, in this. 
because nowadays most banks deal with uh, uh, international banking so they deal with number of currencies so uh, you know very strong moment in the currency really impact their business then there is liquidity risk uh, a number of time customer refinance their loans they uh, do pay off um, they do early pay off which is not a good for the uh, bank and there are also funding issues uh, you know sometimes the bank may run out of money or run out of liquidity and it may not be able to pay uh, for the uh, obligations that it has to its customers and that could actually cause problems and regulatory issues so that's known as liquidity risk then there is operational risk so there is risk associated with the uh, political legal uh, uh, and the natural uh, calamity uh, in the country in which the bank is operating so that could affect the business of the bank and actually uh, can impact uh, the profitability of the bank so that is known as the operational risk a lot of these risk measures are also calculated uh, for uh, reporting purpose to central banks to regulatory authorities and it's also used for internal purpose so uh, who are the employers for risk analysts or people working in risk analytics there are retail banks and there are non banking financial services firms like uh, auto finance like uh, like toyota finance uh, ford credit uh, volkswagen finance and so on uh, insurance firms the number of insurance firms who uh, you know hire these people for pricing for for variety of purposes and trading firms uh, for the algorithmic trading for investment uh, strategy and quantification of risk and all investment banks they they use uh, high level highly quantitative techniques for the investment purpose and also assessing the risk credit bureau also use um, you know banking uh, and the banking analytics a lot so they provide uh, bank, uh, the bureau analytics or uh, credit related analytics to different bank and financial organization like uh, fico in us hedge fund also use them so these are the organizations or these are the places where risk analyst can potentially find employment so what are the roles you can expect in a financial analytics department you can be an analyst uh, these roles are slightly confusing and overlapping that means uh, it it could you know there could be similar roles but, uh, among these um, these roles that i have defined that i have mentioned here there will be similar work and also roles could change with the uh, country in which you are working and also the department and uh, the banks you are working with um it could be an analyst or a, or a quant analyst at the at the ones who uh, were like you know more of business people but they also use uh, a bit of uh, analytics uh, data analytics quants are more into quantitative uh, techniques they use a lot of uh, algorithms from machine learning from econometrics from physics uh, to assess risk and to you know do pricing uh, and uh, pricing of different assets financial assets and then there are quantitative economists who work primarily on macroeconomic data who do economic forecasting for the bank and there are data science experts who are uh, more into algorithms use a lot of computer science and um, you know techniques from uh, computer science and machine learning uh, and find out pattern in the data and you know suggest uh, different uh, very rare events to do the uh, managements and there are modelers uh, modelers again are pretty much like quants Uh, but in number of retail banks especially they calling it as uh, they normally call them as modelers they work as credit risk modelers uh, or ala modelers where they use econometrics techniques to uh, build regulatory models like basel models um, and icap models and so on and there are uh, people who validate these models are known as model validator that means they monitor and they review model uh, the models on a regular basis and known as model validators so what is uh, what are the educational uh, education uh, sub subjects or 
what is should be the education background of somebody uh, to be able to get into uh, such roles uh, one can have a degree in finance um, an mba in finance a degree in accounting or a masters in accounting or a chartered accounting uh, one can have masters or phd in quantitative finance economics physics actually which is a very good certification and has been there for a very long time in the world one can uh, one can have a phd or math, uh, msc in statistics or mathematics computer science or different branches of engineering so people with good quantitative background can enter into this field there is no restriction uh, some of these fields may have some age for example if you are uh, working for investment banks working as a quant uh, then if, if you, you are from the physics background um, particularly uh, with uh, statistical physics background uh, you, you have an age um, similarly if you are working for insurance if you are applying for insurance companies people with actuaries background uh, have an age over others but anyone with uh, a quantitative background can actually uh, get into these roles so what are the skill sets that is required so uh, what the banks or the financial organizations look for um, is that you should have sound understanding of the basic statistics uh, the, mostly the college level and university level statistics econometrics um, and data mining techniques so you must be comfortable with regression classification clustering uh, principal component analysis data mining techniques like decision tree and then forecasting technique like time series and so on and then you should be comfortable with statistical softwares like SAS, R, MATLAB and uh, good to know with some scripting language and programming language because that's how you implement your uh, algorithm or models in the real time scenario so good to have uh, skill uh, in programming uh, programming languages could be Python, Java, C++ uh, then if you have good knowledge uh, on the different financial products uh, simple ones uh, and the more complicated ones then it's it's, it's always an added advantage and then uh, also you should know what are uh, the financial services uh, you know the banks provide it could be local uh, different countries have different types of financial services uh, so uh, knowledge of the local uh, financial services uh, um, is also beneficial and understanding of business is always important then regulations uh, sometimes banks uh, expect you to know a little bit of international regulations like Basel and local regulations uh, because most of these models output are being used for regulatory reporting so uh, it's always good to know uh, what are the basic regulations involved in this uh, models Okay, uh, so what are the educational programs that uh, one can uh, actually uh, go in for? Uh, you can do a master's or a PhD in econometrics, physics, maths, computer science, uh, or you, write, you can write uh, actual papers and get into these fields. Or else, if somebody wants more like managerial position or management uh, or more like accounting uh, positions with some bit of uh, data analytics then one can go for MBAs or being a, uh, can be a, a chartered accountant. There are a number of international uh, level certifications uh, well recognized in the industry uh, available um, and these are part time programs so if somebody cannot go in for full time masters program uh, or even if somebody has a full time masters program and wants to uh, you know learn more industry best practices then uh, it's always good to have a certification um, the most popular ones are the financial risk management uh, popularly known as FRM and professional risk management uh, known as PRM chartered financial analyst known as CFA and then you can always do actual certifications and the last one is the certificate in quantitative finance CQA uh, which is given by uh, Dr. Paul Wilmont um, that is also good for uh, people uh, wanting to get into uh, quantitative finance and uh, uh, yes 
then uh, there are also roles related to uh, data and IT because IT is heavily involved in quantitative uh, modeling um, and, and these roles are uh, suitable for people with uh, IT background and a bit of knowledge of finance. They may not be very comfortable with the quantitative techniques used in finance but but uh, if somebody has good IT background, has worked in IT, uh, IT and finance, then he can actually find roles in data extraction for modeling and data reporting. Um, then business intelligence is also another area. Then models, once they are built, are also implemented by people uh, from IT. So one can find a good position over there. Model related to production support. So um, you know constantly these models have to be given production support system support one can find uh, roles there and nowadays data lineage documentation is also an important thing so people uh, with good documentation skill and uh, can actually find uh, roles in these areas and also it is important that people with substantial IT background wanting to get into modeling uh, predictive modeling or quantitative analysis can start the career in these areas which is like more like ad hoc support to the modeling and then side by side one can learn the modeling techniques and quantitative techniques and get into uh, more sophisticated modeling roles later on. So where can you find the job postings? You can always find good number of postings in LinkedIn. So if you have mentioned the location in LinkedIn um, so a number of job fits will be given uh, by the LinkedIn algorithm uh, which are, which are uh, related to uh, or which are posted in your local area. Say for example uh, since I am in Amsterdam now I can see a number of uh, risk analytics job uh, you know for me in the in Amsterdam. You can see a job for junior quantitative researcher, junior risk manager and, and so on. So you keep getting this uh, notification on a regular basis so always good to have a profile in LinkedIn. So uh, the job description could be like this uh, quantitative risk analyst and then you know you will see uh, what is the requirement like in this case you are supposed to know model development of credit risk, market risk, counterparty credit risk and you should know developing probability of default model, exposure at default model, loss given default models, doing stress testing doing economic capital models and so on and one should also be uh, comfortable with uh, the regulations like uh, uh, you know capital uh, calculation compliances and then um, IFRS regulations and all uh, they must they also uh, define uh, they also uh, mention what what exactly should be a qualification. You should have a master's in econometrics, financial mathematics, physics, or related with good knowledge of modern statistical and econometric techniques. So that's clearly is mentioned, right? So you will see similar profiles in most uh, quantitative uh, analytics uh, job profiles. You can also find job posting in local job sites, uh, like in India. You can uh, find jobs in uh, in a very popular uh, job site in India known as Nokri.com. You can see consultant have posted um, jobs uh, for an MNC uh, where you know they are asking for people with uh, scorecard modeling development experience in the credit card industry and wholesale banking and should have exposure to US and Euro region you know regulations and with master's degree or PhD in statistic economics, maths, quant science. Okay, some of the recruiters. There are thousands of recruiters all over the world. Um, you will, you know, you can actually be recruited in uh, big multinational uh, banks uh, or even your local banks or financial organizations. Could be trading, small trading companies, hedge funds, um, auto financing organization, um, and so uh, even credit trading organizations. So you know, some of the top recruiters, um, you know. In which my friends are working like City, ANJ, JP Morgan, RBS, FICO, Barclay, and the, there is an endless list to it. So opportunity is huge in this area, and it's very lucrative. Pays are amazing, uh, very very good. Um, you know the average pay in risk analytics is more than uh, most other analytics, um, and way more than the IT.